Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. I am so absolutely stinking excited to be back filming a video for you guys. I cannot tell you how much I've missed filming. Um, I even just crafting card making in general, I have really, really missed it. Um, I've been gone for a little while. I don't know if you have or haven't noticed. <laughs> um, if you have and you want to find out um, a little bit more about where I've been, what's kind of been going on, or even if you haven't noticed and you just want to find out, um, I did a whole blog post yesterday about what's kind of been going on in my life, um, what my focus is going to be starting now and moving forward, and kind of what you can expect to see from me in the um, upcoming future. So I'm super, super excited to get back into filming. I have missed it, and like I said, just crafting in general, honestly, has kind of taken a back seat in my life. So I'm super excited to get back into it, and starting today with this super fun and adorable card. So. Um, with October being a breast cancer awareness month, I just didn't feel right not doing a card to portray, not portray that necessarily, but to represent that. And I just thought this one was absolutely amazing. So, um, unfortunately so many people out there, um, know somebody and, or have breast cancer or have been affected and affected by it in some way, shape or form. So I just thought this card was a really great one to give to somebody, even if they, you don't, wouldn't have to give this card to somebody that is actually going through treatment or a survivor. You could give this to somebody who's been affected. Maybe their family member, um, has been affected something like that. You know, this is a great card to just kind of put it all out there to live in the moment and enjoy the little things. So I really hope you guys enjoy this one today and it's so stinking easy. So honestly, this is a great card to do. So to make this card, Super, super simple. I am gonna change up one thing and you'll see, um, I'll compare them side by side once we make the one that we're gonna to make together today. But to start off with, we're going to be using the Ribbon of Courage stamp set. Love this stamp set, it's so beautiful, so much fun to work with. Um, you have these two really amazing, big, bold ribbon images. And this doesn't even have to be for breast cancer awareness. You could use it for any um, kind of awareness that's out there. There are tons of different things that you can use this for. I just happen to be using this in October with pink for breast cancer awareness, but this is totally not limited to that. You could do a ton of different things. And if nothing else, these sentiments are absolutely amazing. I'll be using these sentiments in tons and tons and tons of cards that are, are not related to this at all. So I think this is a really great one to have in your stash. Next thing that we're gonna be using are our stitch shape. Hang on, my oven's going off. Oh my gosh, that would totally happen to me right now. <laughs> I am making dinner and the oven's going off. So anyways, the next thing that we're using are our stitch shape, stitched shapes framelits. <laughs> um, and we're gonna be using a couple of the ovals. Um, I'm also using two different inks today. We're gonna be using our Versamark as well as Melon Mambo. And then along with that, I just have a little sponge here. Um, I used our Tag Punch, and I don't remember what the name of it is off the top of my head. Um, it was new in the annual catalog and it just makes these cute little tags. And so um, I've attached it to my sponge and I just wrote the color and I used that color of um, cardstock so I know which color of ink this is. Cause I just keep these in a little bin um, which they get kind of messy, but um, I just keep them in there so I can kind of look for the tab, the color of tab that I want to use and pull it out. And that way I don't um, have to use a new sponge every single time. I think I bought like one or two packs of sponges when I first became a demonstrator like two and a half years ago. And I've never had to purchase a new one because I just cut them up super tiny and I use them over and over and over again. So you need some kind of blending um, tool. It doesn't have to be the sponge, but some kind of blending tool is what you're going to need. I also have our white embossing powder. Um, we're gonna be using our uh, embossed, embossed resist technique on this card today. And then for our paper, I have some of our Dazzling Diamonds sheets here. I love these and they add just that perfect little pop of um, glitz and glam to a card. So we have two pieces here. The first one I have cut at four inches by five and a quarter. And this is what's gonna be different about our card. So um, in my sample, I just did one layer for the card that we're gonna make together, we're actually gonna put um, this piece that we're gonna stamp and um, ink up. That's gonna be slightly smaller and we're gonna put this behind it just to give it another little pop. So you'll need a piece of Dazzling Diamonds, 
And then I also just have um, another piece here and I don't have an exact dimension. This is, just needs to be big enough to use the biggest oval in the stitch shape framelits die set. And then for our other paper, I have two pieces of regular Whisper White cardstock. This one here is cut at five inches, or I'm sorry, three and three quarters by five inches. And then I have another here. Again, it's just a scrap large enough to cut out um, our little oval here. And that's regular Whisper White. And then I have a piece of thick Whisper White, which is cut at eight and a half by five and a half and scored at four and a quarter. When you're using the thick um, whisper white and thick very vanilla paper I would highly recommend scoring your line where you're going to fold it because then you don't get the crazy bumpies on the crease line when you fold it and create your card so that is everything we're using for today's video so let's go ahead and jump into it okay so I'm sorry if that wasn't in focus just now I think my camera's messing with me because it was in focus and then it wasn't in focus so I don't really know what's happening, but hopefully everything is good now. So the first thing we're going to do is take our piece of Whisper White, and this is a piece that is cut at three and three quarters by five inches. We're gonna use this stamp from the set. And um, we're also going to use our Versamark ink here. And all I'm going to do is bring in a background piece of paper. Now, um, I will be using my like grid mat here in a minute, um, but I like to use just a piece of computer paper when I'm doing um, embossing like this because I can really easily throw it away and I don't feel so bad for throwing away a piece of paper than I do for our, grid, our big uh, grid sheets. Not that they're super expensive or anything, but it just, self-consciously, sometimes I feel bad throwing those sheets away when I've only used them like once or twice. So. I'm just going to take my Versamark here and I'm just gonna randomly stamp these little ribbons all over my piece of Whisper White now, uh, right here. So um, I'm just kind of, like I said, randomly stamping them. I'm not doing anything uh, super thought out. I'm just working from the top to bottom, making sure I cover as much space as possible. Um, I will say that it's a little difficult to see where you've stamped. So if it helps you to stamp and then emboss and heat it and then continue that so you can see a little bit better where you've stamped, go for it. Um, I've kind of done this enough now that I'm pretty comfortable seeing where I've stamped and where I haven't. And the other thing is my Versamark ink has um, had, it's, it's been loved. <laughs> if that's the correct term to use, it's definitely been loved. So it's got a little bit of a hint of um, some kind of color to it. So it's a little easier for me to see, um, but it definitely is a little difficult sometimes. So if you feel like you have to do something else to be able to see it a little better, do whatever you need to do to make sure you can see where you still need to stamp. So that's all I've done. That's it, super easy. Um, I just chatted through that and didn't really pay attention to what I was doing. So hopefully it turns out well. <laughs> um, next, I'm just gonna take my white embossing powder and I'm gonna find an area that doesn't really have any ink on it. This little corner doesn't have any ink on it for the most part. And I'm just going to put my embossing powder all over my piece here. And I'm gonna flip this upside down. Oh man, my people are trying to get a hold of me right now. Don't they know I'm busy filming a video? Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna pour all my embossing powder back into my little container. Do, 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 do. I haven't really been, well, first, I haven't really been crafting in general recently, but even when I was, I wasn't really, I don't feel like I was doing heat embossing that much. Um, and I forgot how much I loved it. Honestly, that's one of the first techniques that I really wanted to learn when I got into stamping. I wanted to do heat embossing because I had seen so many other people do it. And I've just kind of gotten out of it the um, past few months that I've been crafting. So I'm super excited to be back doing it. I absolutely love it. And there's so many fun techniques that you can do. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and speed this part up because all I'm gonna do is heat set it with my heat tool. I'm using setting number two. Um, on our Stampin' Up heat tool. And I'm also just gonna use my bone folder here to kind of hold it down so that I don't burn my little fingers. So I will be right back. Okay, so that's all melted now. Um, with the white, it is a little hard to see and my office is kind of dark right now. I didn't realize how dark it was, hopefully this video turns out okay. I'm sorry, this may be a really failed video for my first one back, <laughs> which would be ironic, wouldn't it? 
Um, so if you have trouble seeing, my best advice is to kind of move it back and forth in the light. And as long as you see the glossy finish of it, you know that it's melted. Um, so that's my number one tip to figure out if your embossing powder is set. Now I need to grab my grid paper so we can do our inking. And of course I just covered it in 50 things. Okay, there we go. So you can see I used this one earlier. I am now going to bring in my Melon Mambo ink and my little um, sponge blender here. And like I was saying earlier, tip for you guys, all I did was I wish I, I wanna say it's everyday, it's not everyday label. I'll put the link somewhere or it'll be in the description box below or in the uh, in my coordinating blog post, which will be below. Um, but all I did was took that little tab, I punched it out in Melon Mambo, wrote on there and then stapled it to my little sponge here. And I'm telling you guys, I bought the pack of sponges comes like three sponges to a pack. And I think I cut them up in like eighths or something like that. I can't even remember, but super small little um, sponges, but they work perfectly well. So I'm just gonna take my sponge here and I always kind of dab it off on my scratch paper and then I start off of the paper and bring the ink in. And this literally takes no time at all to get a nice look to it. Now you can do this as dark or as light as you want to. Um, I'm going pretty dark just because I like that color, but if you wanted it to be a really soft look, you could do it lighter. You don't have to do it as dark as I am. Now one tip, because the ink is going to stay on the embossing powder, I just take the corner of my paper here, my background paper, whether you're using a piece of copy paper, your grid paper or something else, and I just use this to hold down my ink, my piece of paper that I'm inking while I ink the rest of it. And the reason is because if you don't, you're gonna get ink on your fingers and you're gonna see fingerprints in here. So uh, you can barely tell, but there's a slight little bit of ink on this corner over here. And that's what that's from. So I just like to avoid getting my fingers all inky and then getting fingerprints on my piece. So that's what I do. Now, after you've done that, what you can do is you can get like a baby wipe or a paper towel and kind of wipe off the embossing um, because the ink will resist that. What I do is I just flip it over on my background piece or whatever I'm using to ink off on and I just kind of rub it just to get like the initial residual ink off. Um, once you're kind of are manipulating the piece and that kind of stuff, the ink will start to resist a little bit more. But like I said, you could take a baby wipe and just rightly go over it and that would help as well. I'm not super concerned about it. I kind of like the ribbons looking like they're a little more pink than white. Um, I prefer that look, so I'm gonna leave it as is, but you could do whatever you felt um, like you wanted to do, you could wipe it off and get it a little more of a crisp white image if that's what you were going for. So I'm gonna take this, set it off to the side. Before I completely put my Melon Mambo ink away, I am going to not, oh no, this is the piece that I wanna use. I am going to grab our stamp here and this one says, live every moment, laugh every day, love with all your heart. And I just think that's super sweet. So I'm just gonna take my Melon Mambo ink, I'm gonna ink this bad boy up, and I'm gonna use my scratch piece of paper here that I grabbed earlier, and I'm just going to stamp that right there. Super cute and adorable. And now we're all done stamping. It's just time to cut everything out and then put this card together. So I'm going to take the piece here that we just cut. I'm gonna grab my two ovals. So from the stitch uh, framelits, I'm using the largest oval and then the second to the largest oval. So they'll nestle together really, nestle, nest together really nicely. I'm just going to grab a piece of washi tape. I just had some. Where did it go? I literally just had it at my desk. I was using it probably less than five minutes ago. Oh, well, we'll find some other washi. We'll use this one. This one's just not my favorite, so. Any hoodle doodle. I really hope you guys have been doing well. I'm so excited to be back filming. You guys have no idea. It's just been kind of crazy. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I did do a whole blog post yesterday about um, where I've been, kind of what I've been up to, my schedule, and kind of what you can expect from me in the upcoming um, weeks, or pretty much from now on, what you can expect from me. So I'm super excited. Anyways, getting off topic, and now my chair won't move. Okay. So I'm gonna take the smaller of the two ovals and I'm just going to center this 
on the little greeting that we just stamped. I'm only putting that down so I make sure I stamp it or I cut it out correctly. And then I'm taking a piece of our Dazzling Diamonds and this is the one that was just kind of our scrap piece. So the one that we cut to the dimensions, leave that one as is, this is just our little scrap. And I'm gonna put that in there just like a lot. And then put that bad boy in there and crank it through. Maybe. <laughs> now, with the Dazzling Diamonds, I like to go twice because it is a little bit thicker um, and I just happen to have my piece of Whisper White in there. It doesn't really need two times through, but because it's there, we'll just leave it. Move my Big Shot back off to the side and now I'm going to take my pieces out here. Oh, so pretty. So we are using the stitch shapes um, with the Dazzling diamonds, you can't really see the stitching on it. Um, it doesn't concern me too much. Honestly, I'm just using it so that I didn't have to grab another framelit set. That's why you can use your regular layering ovals if you wanted to, but why pull out something else if you don't have to? So now we really just need to put this card together. Um, I'm going to flip over this little piece here and find my dimensionals. And I'm going to put four dimensionals on our little stamped piece. One, two, three, four. Okay. And because we're using the Dazzling Diamonds, I would recommend using dimensionals or a stronger adhesive to adhere everything together. I'm just gonna use dimensionals because I like dimensionals, but you can use whatever you want. Um, fast fuse, tear and tape, whatever floats your boat. So there's that piece. And then I'm gonna bring in our little stamped image here, as well as our piece of Dazzling Diamonds that we cut to the correct dimensions. And I wanted this to be raised up, so I'm just going to put a few dimensionals all over the back. Not that many. Maybe that many. Okay, that should be good. Now I have a bunch of dimensionals stuck to my fingers. Okay, there we go. Let's just get these bad boys up, maybe. I just cut my nails yesterday, so it's been a little rough to get these dimensional backs up. Come on, buddy. Work with me here. Work with me here. And one more, there we go. So many dimensionals to put in the trash. Okay, so now I'm just going to take our emboss piece here and I'm just kind of rocking it because it got a little warped from the um, embossing, but not too bad. And then I'm just going to center it on here as best as I can. Good enough, just squeeze that down. See, I just got ink all over my fingers. It's okay though. Okay, then I'm gonna flip this over. I'm just gonna use some, maybe I'm going to use some <laughs> snail. Why isn't this working? What the heck, snail? There we go. I don't know why this isn't working. I've been having issues with my adhesives lately and I don't know why, but honestly, I've been having such bad issues. Anyway, so actually before we do that, let me fold our card base in half so I can see where we need this to go. Crease that so I have a good um, indication where I want this. And then I'm gonna center this up on here. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. You guys don't even know. And then I'm just going to take some more adhesive. Oh my gosh. First, there's a hair, and second, maybe I'm just not being patient enough. I don't know what's happening today. There we go. Okay, and then I'm just going to put that in the center. 
stick it down and there is our card so I just want to put the two side by side you so you can see the difference um, this one has the dazzling diamonds in the background so it's definitely more glitzy and it pops a little bit more I think but this one is really simple and it's got just a little bit of oomph to it um, but it's also very simple and very classic I feel like so I think both are great options depending on which way you want to go um, and what your personal style is. So as always, um, all of the products will be in the coordinating blog post, which is the first link down below, as well as um, some up close photos and more information about what I used and how I made these cards. Um, and you can also purchase all of the products 24 seven just by visiting littlemooncreation.stampinup.net. And if you have any questions, any suggestions, anything ever, you can always leave me a comment in the description box or in the description in the um, comment section below this video. Make sure you subscribe um, to support my channel and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.